talk about remember what God has done for you. Remember what God has done for us. God said, take the 12 stones and set up a memorial. He said he wanted you to remember what God has brought you through. I come today to tell you that we need to remember what God has brought us through because it's going to help our future. If you look at holidays, holidays are to remind you. We have Memorial Day. We want to remember the soldiers who lost their lives for us. Uh, when you go to D.C., you see the monument. You see uh, the, uh, uh, Dr. King monument. You see Lincoln monument. Other holidays that we may have, we have Mother Day. Some people don't even come home until Mother's Day. They want to remember Mama on that day. We have things that to remind us how good God has been or how good people have been. A memorial is basically, is basically an establishment to remind you of the past. Because sometimes we soon forget. Have you ever helped somebody out? Just say they needed five dollars and they came to you, please, please, can you help me? And you help them out and then as soon as you know, they get the money from you, you see them next time they forgot to pay you back. And God is saying, you forget how good I've been to you sometime. And he's saying, you need to remember. Now, you're just crossing over Jordan, but you're now in the promised land, and now it's time for battle. I come to tell you, when you get ready to go into the promise that God has for you, there are going to be some battles in your life, and you need to get your mind right. And he's letting them know that during these times, you're going to have some more things. But he wanted them to see the miracles that he's done in his life. What are the stones in your life? Can you reflect back over your life and remember the good things that God helped you through? Those things in the past can help you from the future. When tomorrow brings you an obstacle, you can look back yesterday and remember how good God has been, and it gives you the faith to move ahead. Man, your faith activates what God has for you. He told him, go through the Jordan. They had to go through the Jordan, and it starts at Mount Hebron. and goes all the way down to the Red Sea. These waters are really tough. And, and, and people wouldn't, wouldn't swim across because of the currents. They were flowing downhill. The Ark of the Covenant is where the commandments are. And it, it was the presence of God. And God told them to take the Ark of the Covenant because of his presence. But he told the priest, go into the mist and let the people go through. I said last week that the water didn't rise up until the priest took the first step. And some of you may be wondering why you have trouble waters, waters in your life. God is waiting on you to make the first step. He's waiting on you to step out in faith. My point number one is you need to think about his goodness. You need to think about his goodness. Look at it says right here. And Joshua said to them, pass on before the ark of the Lord your God in the midst of the Jordan and take up what? You a stone. I remember back in the day and uh, who, who by my age up in here? Well, Phyllis, you know, y'all you know, at USM, we used to have this song uh, by UGK, a pocket full of stones. <laughs> oh, don't act like y'all have been in church all y'all lying now. I got a pocket full of stones, right? And we used to listen to Pimp C and Bomb B. Y'all know it. Y'all know it. So come on with it. Pimp C and Bomb B. I got a pocket. And I was at Jackson State now. See, honey, see, y'all got these little small radios. See, I had a JVC that sit this tall. Big old speaker that I had one. Anybody know what I'm talking about out there? <laughs> and whenever I play my pocket full of stones, I make the wall shake. And then it's 1991, honey, 18 years old. I'm singing a pocket full of stones. I didn't know he was talking about selling crack rock. <laughs> I ain't never sold dope in my life. But I used to ride around in that 1979 Chevette. They used to hear me before they see me. The muffler fell off. But I had a pocket full of stone. Now, I, anybody remember the song, Pocket Full of Stone? Now, if you can remember Underground King, surely you can remember the King of Kings and the things he's done for you back in your past. Surely you can remember when you didn't see a way, he made a way. Surely you can remember when people counted you out, he counted you in. Sure, you can remember in your mind you're about to go crazy, and now God coming to your heart. Now you can praise his name. Is there anybody here who can testify we serve an awesome God? Yeah. Come on, we serve an awesome God. <laughs> do you remember? He asked you, do you remember? The stones mark a defining moment in your life when God brought you through. Reflect on your life right now. That's how I can get through the day. When people get over on me, they're like, how do you take that? I just think about how good he's been to me. You ain't going to win it all. Everybody not going to love you. There are going to be people who fool you and get over on you. And people ask, man, how you keep rolling forth? Man, he's too good to me. I cannot be over here fighting with the chickens and God told me to soar with the eagles. I mean, if you out there, you got a little chicken fights going on in your life. You got a promise in your life. You, God is saying, get your mind right for the promise. Yeah, there are going to be some battles. Yeah, there are going to be some convictions. Yeah, there are going to be some things in your life, and it's not fair. I'm going to help somebody out there because I'm the type of person I treat folks right, and I don't like when they don't play fair. Y'all know how it is, don't play fair. And sometimes you want to tell them, you know, I ain't always been a preacher. 
You really don't know me. <laughs> anybody, come on now. Anybody have terrorist insanity sometimes? I had a situation that somebody did everything they can do to run me in the ground and, and, and lied on me and did some things. And it, it was a lady at, at the HUD office. And I was like, why is this woman against me trying to, t you know, take me down? And, uh, you know, they told me there was something wrong with herself. She don't like herself. <laughs> and a whole lot of time when people be against you, it's because they don't even like themselves. Now, why would I battle with somebody that don't even care about themselves? They just won't mess. And I realized that it wasn't fair, and I was just going through my mind, why, why, why? I'm talking to somebody out here today. Why is this being done to me, and I haven't done anything that's been said? You know, folks who set up some traps on you, and then they'll lie to you, lie on you. I went to the board meeting, they made some old lies up, and just making stuff up. You go to court, they're going to make some old lies up. And I'm like, why me? But I thought about something I was riding, I thought about what my mama said to me a long time ago. I, I was facing this situation, I said, mama, it ain't fair. You what she told me. She said, Picasso. The fair is once a year, and it's in Jackson, Mississippi. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to help somebody right there now. That might get somebody some praise now. The fair is how many times a year? And where is it located? You go down there for two weeks, but the other, third, the other 300, look, and 50 days of the year, it's going on. It's popping. The devil is what? I'm trying to help somebody. Somebody ain't fair. No, it ain't fair. But you keep praising his name. Don't you get your mind off God. See, the devil wants to distract you. Do you remember? I want you to think on his goodness. Look at Psalm 77 and 12. It says, I will do what? Yes. On all you have what? No. Do I have time for the chicken fight? No. I got to reflect on all he has done. Yeah, you got over on me, but man, God got some great info in store for me. Come on. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you don't lie on me, but God got some great in store for me. How many people feel that way today? That God got some great in store for you? Come on now. I we reflect all you have done and do what to it? On your action. Or you, that, I mean, that's, that's, that's good right there. You got to meditate on these actions. See, these folks right here, you don't cross the Jordan, but you got, some, you got Jericho, you got some other cities, you got AI, you got a lot of battles in front of you. You need to be thinking about his goodness. God is saying before you go into this new battle, you need to think about me and remember. I was watching cartoons the other day. And the little engine that could. He was like, I think I can. I know I can. <laughs> I think I can. I know I can. Well, as a believer, you need to say, I know I can because I trust the Lord. I know I can because he said, he, said, he said, if I do his will, he will see me through. I'm just telling you right now. I don't know what you're saying to yourself. You think you can. You know you can. Look, this, look, look what the little engine did. He had to get his mind right. You had to get mentally ready before you get physically ready. And God is helping him out right there, right here. Number one, think of his goodness. Number two, you need to thank him for his goodness. Look what Joshua did right here. Now, Lord told him, the Lord told him to tell the 12 tribes to pick up a stone, right? Then the priest stopped in the middle of the Jordan. And Joshua is saying, you've been too good to me, Lord. I'm going to put me 12 stones in the middle of the Jordan. Let me go back. Let me take it on back down memory lane. I remember in the fourth grade, Miss Bullock at Bashfield Elementary, and we had some students in there, April Calway and Denise Thompson and, and David Eccles. They had 104 average and 103 average. They had, they had 100 plus average. And the reason why they can do that, because Ms. Bullock gave them extra credit. I ain't getting no extra credit. I wasn't doing no extra homework, you know what I'm saying? I was too busy throwing spitballs. And, and you know how little boys do when y'all in school. See, honey, you don't know nothing about that. We used to write love better. Would you go with me, circle what? So, oh, come on now, come on. <laughs> Reverend Taylor know what I'm talking about. You see, y'all, young boy know. And we just take that lead and fold it up. And you know how you fold it up? And, oh, you know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? And then sometimes you make an airplane and you make it. You, come on now, you sit across the room. I had my cousin Chris in my class. He, he wrote all the girls say, look, would you go with me? So, yes, no. They called him Nasty Chris. <laughs> but here, here's, here's, here's my point. If you look at the extra credit, that's what Joshua did. The Lord told him to tell the to 12 tribes, right? But Joshua said, God, you've been so good to me. You brought me out of bondage of Egypt. You brought me through 40 years of the, of, of, of the wilderness. You, you, you helped me so much in my life. You made me the leader after Moses died. You gave me confidence with the 12 spies. I said, yes, we can because I believe in our God. I'm just coming to tell you right now, Joshua understand how God has been so good to him. He had to give him extra. You may say, well, I pay my tithe. That's just the number. Are you serving? And God said, I'll make you great because God knew his heart. 
Ask yourself today, what can I be doing more of? Have he been too good to you and you're sitting back and not using your gift for the kingdom? Joshua said, no, no, I, I know they did their thing, but check this out, Elder Posey. He put the stones in the middle with a preset. One thing about them stones, during this time of the Jordan, it was flood season. So once they passed over onto dry land, the water came back flowing. Somebody going to ask me, well, look, how can they walk through it and the water rise up? Because God controls the flow. <laughs> That's how they can do it. Somebody asked him, how can you drive what you drive? Because I serve a mighty God. How can you smile when you got all this going on in your life and you can be happy because I serve a good God? And you can get you some God too. <laughs> but in the middle, he puts it in there and, and, and he puts the stones to say how good God has been. I want to tell somebody out there who's going through something right now, you're in the middle of it right now, just put some God in it. Just put some God in You get to the other side. That's what he, that's what he did. He said, I got to put my 12 stones in too. So during the flood season, when the water came back over and started to flow, no one could see the stones. But Joshua didn't care what anybody else saw. He just knew he was being good to God and honoring God. How many people out there know you're doing your thing and you don't care what nobody else thinks? You're just making sure you do it for God? Amen. Come on now. Yeah. Joshua was saying, look at, let's look at Psalms 9 and 1. It says, I will give who? Thanks. To the Lord with who? Do everybody got to see it with my whole heart, right? I will recount all of your what? Man, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I don't know who's facing something right now, but I tell you, whatever you're facing, don't take your eyes off the prize. Don't get distracted. God is good to you. I didn't say people going to always be good to you. I heard, I was talking to Hunter there. Man, I said, Hunter, who's seen that song? I got two phones. He said, Kevin Gates. I said, you ain't even let me get it out. He said, that's my dog. <laughs> but he even said something intelligent. I know, <laughs> he said, I can't do you like you did me. I need all my what? Blessings. Come on now. Yeah, that's, that's helping somebody out there. I need all my blessings now. I, I, I saw another one right here. Check this out. It says, a strong woman will remain what? Sorry. When people talk behind her what? But that doesn't mean she doesn't notice. It just simply means she what? Jesus. Not to waste her what? Energy. Where you give your energy? On what? She has what? Come on, who got more important things to do? Who got more important things to do? Come on now, who got more important things to do? And he's been so good to me and you. People are always to my day depressed. Just think back. People are angry sometimes. Just think about it. Think back. I was facing something this weekend, this, 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 this um, Thursday, and it wasn't fair. And I was driving. Look at all the blessings I had today. And I got happy. I had forgot about my problems. I had a bank call me, running something bank. They said, Mr. Nelson, we're doing a client, I can't remember, what spotlight. So they bring in people that they, you know, give loans to or businessmen. And they just started. They bring you in once a month. They eat. They ask you questions. How do you do, what's, what, what do you like about a bank? This is this. They ask you a ton. How do you do your business? And I'm sitting in there. And then none of them, we first started meeting like 30 of them. Then none of them looked like me. And the guy that introduced me, and, and his name Brad, great guy, he said, I always looked up to him. And he said, I got much respect for what he does. I like, like his integrity. And, and they asked, they said, when they asked them who the first person they're going to bring in, they said, a little old nappy head boy from Bassfield, Mississippi. And they sit there, and, and they write notes and taking notes. And I'm like, whoa. And, 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 and then I started, you know, then they started laughing. I started cracking jokes then, like, whoa, I'm in the right place. They, they smile it, and I'm like, well, and when I left, I said, Mr. Nelson, you, is there anything you need? Now, I'm driving down the highway now. They said, whatever you need, you let us know, and we're going to help you grow, right? Come on now. I'm riding down the highway, and I'm worried about somebody that got over me, on me. I'm still mad about that. But then when I reflect back on how good he's been to me, why am I worried about that little gnat that's been bad to me? Man, you walked in here this morning. Who cares? what other people's opinion of you are. You still got your birth. Somebody rip you off. That's right. The fair is how many times a year? Wow. Don't let them do it to you. What? Wow. It's over with. In life, you either win. No. You either win or you learn. <laughs> so I don't, you count as a loss, so you're going to stay on your mind. <laughs> when people stay on your mind, then you, you know how it go. 
You start, you, yeah, you start controlling you, right? And so what I'm saying right there, you got to think about his goodness. I see folk, people all the time, they do great deeds. Joshua didn't care if you saw the stones. He didn't care what was going on. But this is what he did. He put the stones out there during the flood season. Nobody could see it. He put the, flood, uh, the stones out there during the regular season. Nobody could see it. But he didn't care. He cared what God thought about him. I saw somebody say, oh, every time you do something good, you ain't got to let everybody know. These are the folks that's on the Facebook. Sometimes you need to get your face out the book and get your face in the good book. Sometimes, somebody told me a long time, good deeds should not be done with what? But for what? <laughs> not for attention, right? If you're doing a good deed, do it. Joshua knew what he was doing. Joshua said, I am doing this because God been good to me. And he realized those stones, you can't see them now. But whenever you're going into the battle of Jericho, and whenever there's a drought in the season, the stones will be seen. I'm going to say it again. In your drought, in your life, sometimes you got to look back in the drought and remember how good God been to you and what he brought you through. Come on now, Joshua knew, he, he knew that he could look back and see what God did. Now, not only do you think about his goodness, and then thank him for his goodness. But you should also tell others about his goodness. He said, look, when the children ask, who got some kids out there that ask a lot of hundred questions? What time we get there? Where we at? <laughs> Are we there yet? <laughs> Why you combing your hair? <laughs> Why you eat like that? Why you smacking? <laughs> he said, you should tell them that your God has been good to you. I'm going to say it like this. Sometimes faith skip a generation. We got kids who was wiser but weaker. And what happened to them in their life, whenever they face adversity in life, they want to throw their hand up and just give up. The greatest gift that a parent can give a child is not the clothes. It's not the material thing. But the greatest gift you can give them is to help them understand that God is faithful and he will bring you through. And if they keep their eyes on our Lord and Savior, he's going to work it out for the good. But yes, it is not fair out here. But God is faithful to the promise that he had in your life. He told Joshua in chapter 1, make you great, but be strong and courageous and meditate on my word day and night. He's saying the same thing to you today. When God sent a blessing to you, he sent it through you. What are we telling our kids? What are we telling our coworkers sometimes who's down? Like, hey, baby, it's going to be okay. God going to work it out. He's going to work it out. I was in that similar situation, but he's going to work it out. But they, they lose hope. They try alternatives, and they end up in a situation worse than what they started with. I was dealing with guy named Tony, he works with Rotorooter Plumbing. He went to this lady's house and all her pipes and the pipes to go to the system was out, crushed. He went to Miss, Miss Bev and he said, Miss Bev, it's going to be $12,000. We're going to replace your whole system from your house all the way down to the main line. I'm about to bring a backhoe in here and other machines and some guys. We're going to have to dig all week and get this done. But that's what's growing. We got a crushed sewage line. She signed off on it. The guys sacrificed all week working day and night with machinery and everything. They completed the job. Miss Beverly signed off. She wrote him a check. And Tony took the check to the office for $12,000. The next day, his boss called him and said, Tony, something ain't right. This check did not bounce, but it was canceled. I need you to go talk to Miss Bev. He went to the house. He said, Miss Bev, I'm, I'm very respectful, but something not right here. She said, Tony, after y'all did all the work and I wrote my check, when y'all left, I started thinking, $12,000 is a lot of money. So I canceled the check. He said, man, with all due respect, you can't go into Winn-Dixie and fill your cart up with groceries, write a check, give it to them, 
and get in your car and say, you know what? That was a lot of money I wrote on that check. And cancel your check. And then drive off. That's highway robbery. She said, oh, I didn't think of it like that. That story touched my heart. <laughs> Since you put it like that, I'm going to go ahead and honor the check. She wrote him another check. He said, this check on bound not Miss Bell. <laughs> she said, it's good. He went and the check was good. But this is my whole point. Everything comes with a price. Sometime in our life, we don't understand that Christ has paid the price for us. And when we don't honor him, we're saying in so many words, we're canceling the check. If you look over your life, how much was the check that God wrote on Calvary? You can't put a price on what? On it. You got to honor the sacrifice. Christ sacrificed for you and he sacrificed for me. And he wanted to know, are you going to honor this? Are you going to remember me? Because I've been too good for, to you. I come today to tell you that honor the sacrifice. He's been good to all of us. And when you honor the sacrifice, you realize that he gave his son for us. When you honor the sacrifice, you understand that he gave us an eternity. When you honor the sacrifice, you understand that we're going to go to a place that's higher and higher than we ever been. How many of you are excited that you serve an awesome God? Come on now. Honor the sacrifice. We hope you enjoyed the message today. It is now time for tithes and offering. There are three ways to give. You can use our cash app at the bottom of the screen. You can also text and it's at the bottom of the screen. Or if you would like, we have a drop box here at the church where you can drop off your giving. Now, if something was said today that moved you and you want to give your life to Christ, we would like for you to call us at 601-408-7156. We want to talk to you about your decision today. Thank you.